This is one of the best examples of urban design that I've seen so far while traveling around Europe and North America. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let me know where you're watching from. Today, we're going to explore the neighborhood of Echample here in Barcelona, in Spain. I'm so excited to see this neighborhood and what it has to offer. So, bon dia, everyone. Now, one thing about this neighborhood is that it's made in these uh, squares. These huge squares have interior courtyards. So, as we're passing through these buildings, there's entire, like, inner courtyard inside. Some of them have huge parking lots. Some of them have parks. Some of them have, like, entire schools. There's a huge variety of things within these courtyards. And maybe I'll catch a glimpse of the courtyards as we're walking around. But first, I want to try one of these uh, chair benches. They made a good job of actually making this very comfy so you can enjoy uh, sitting down, enjoying the street life here. Now we are in a mostly pedestrianized uh, street here in Barcelona and wow, this is comfy. I'm really digging how comfy this is. So it's just nicely leaning back. Uh, the wood has a nice bump to it. And I like that this type of bump makes it very comfy to sit down. I like how there's three of them. Uh, so you can hear, chat with friends, with neighbors, um, a stranger, whatever is your fancy. And I really dig this. Wow, and just sitting down in this area, this is, this is what I think we need in our cities is more public seating that's actually comfortable. Uh, because if you go to many American cities, they purposely make these seats uncomfortable and, or they take them out uh, at night and just put them out during the day. These are here um, permanent. Uh, so this is a very comfy seat. I would give this a bench rating of 8.5. Five out of ten. It's that good. This is an 8.5 out of 10. Let's explore El Chample. Whew, it's a bit cold in here. The tricky part about this season, it's about 65 degrees Fahrenheit and it's cold in the shade and warm in the sun. So it's really hard to dress perfectly for this weather. And I love the mix of old and new architecture. Now this was designed by the urban designer, Cerda, who was tasked to design this more than 100 years ago, uh, Barcelona, which used to be a very crowded city back in the Gothic Quarter. And in order to open it up to more light, to more air, to less, um, less disease and less social issues. And this was the age before the car, but he wanted to provide wide streets in order for horses to come in and out. And then later on, he anticipated uh, streetcars and subways. So he designed these streets very wide, which proved to be rather genius because later on they accommodated cars pretty well. But that's until a few decades ago. Barcelona ended up being choked with carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and all the terrible fumes from heavy car traffic. And that was because the city was designed uh, in order to accommodate wide open streets, which at first were for the horses, so pedestrians and horses wouldn't be crisscrossing each other too much. But then they end up being perfect for cars. You have these wide open streets. However, end up being too good for cars. Everyone had a car. So Barcelona had to do something. How can you limit car traffic and open up the streets for pedestrians, for better living standards? And they did something was called super blocks. So they took four blocks right here, Right here, right here, four blocks, and united them 
and pedestrianize the streets within those blocks. So it's mostly pedestrianized. You have to be a resident in order to drive through these blocks or providing some type of uh, uh, distribution of goods in order to come in here, or taxis as well, emergency vehicles, but it's mostly pedestrianized. So you see everyone sitting down here. Okay, so there's not many people around. It's a big city, you know. Um, I, there's a lot of people here. It's just, you have to go to certain places. In the shade, it's a bit too cold. That's why the shade was pretty empty. So let me show you how the street grid was made. And we can see the blocks over here. And they are not a perfect grid. Unlike Manhattan, which is mostly a perfect grid with the exception of Broadway and a few neighborhoods. But here they did decided not to do the grid 100%. Uh, geometric uh, which proved to be a really good decision because it allowed for some variety in the city as well nicole says is it your last day in barcelona it is my last day in barcelona yeah hey uh ambrose says denim i thought ariel was a floral shirt kind of guy <laughs> you know I kind of got tired of wearing florals all the time so look at these I love that they even had these picnic tables here this is so cool oh this is the life right here hi uh, this is the life over here I love how wide open uh, the streets are here wow Almo says, um, no need to panic, it's not double denim. No, I'm not wearing a Canadian tuxedo. Is today my last day here in Barcelona? It is. Susie says, I'm sitting in the bench in City Hall right now. So lucky. <laughs> hey, Nicole says, nice weather in Barcelona. Cherry blossoms are blooming. They are indeed, yeah. They're blooming right now. It's very nice. And I love how the cafes here have outdoor seating. Daniel says, nice stop to uh, sit and relax. Yes. This is, ex this is a genius idea, the, uh, the idea of super blocks, combining what was originally a grid pattern uh, that allowed anything uh, to pass through its streets, and then uniting blocks of those grid in the grid in order to uh, pedestrianize it. I think that's genius. I think we should do that in New York City. Uh, rather than having the entire Manhattan open to car traffic, we should start kind of combining blocks together uh, so you can have more city life like this and more street life, people outdoors, eating outdoors. Uh, because one thing that people usually say about New York is that, oh, it's too cold. Uh, no one's gonna eat outdoors, it's too noisy. Uh, it's too, too, the air is too polluted. That's because we allow cars to be everywhere and parking to be everywhere. If we adopt something like this that Barcelona did just recently, uh, we could have more of a street life in many other parts of New York that's not just the West Village. Hey, Irene, nice to see you here. Hello, Lorraine, welcome. Hello, Adam. Eat the cake says, time for espresso. I had two Americanos waking up today. Uh, but I, if we see a beautiful cafe, which we will, I will stop by and have another coffee. So we're wandering around. There's not that much more, I'm not going to really discuss much more history aside from uh, the urban plan that we're looking at. But uh, feel free to ask me any questions about travel, about my impressions with Barcelona. 
Ron says, as a cab passes behind you, yeah, it is semi-pedestrianized, not fully pedestrianized. So I love how Barcelona, you see this tiling everywhere. Vlad says, glad to have catch you uh, live, Ariel. Hey man, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate that. Susie says, I never say it's too cold. It's cold in the, in the shade. It's like 66, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. It gets very cold in the shade and very warm in the sun. That's why in the shaded areas, almost no one's out right now. It's a bit too cold. Nicole says, how was your Airbnb? My Airbnb was awesome. Um, I really enjoyed it. I recommend it. I won't be able to share a video because it's a private residence and I draw the line when it comes to Airbnb reviews. I don't share private residences, at least how they look like inside and where they're located. But uh, if anyone wants the link, uh, you can reach out to me directly and then after I'm done with my trip, I'm happy to share the link to my Airbnb. And look at the architecture, wow. Hey, Linda, one of my favorite cities. And Maria says, I love the intricate ironwork on the balconies. Yes. And I love how this city is so heavy on balconies. Where are you ending your trip, says Katerina. Katerina, here. Uh, I'm going back to New York right after this. I'm working with the airliner. You'll find out who they are soon. Uh, they sponsored two TikToks, which you're going to see those TikToks very soon, within, within this week. And then uh, on my other platforms, I'll let you know who they were. And uh, I'll share the link to the TikTok. So if you're tuning in right now, um, once I post that TikTok, if you could do me a huge solid and comment on that TikTok. I know not everyone uses TikTok, but a good portion of you do. If you could comment on that TikTok, I'll put the link in the Instagram stories, Facebook, and YouTube so you can see where it, it, where it is. And uh, it'll be a big, big help uh, because I would love to continue uh, doing partnerships like these so I can show even further out places, not just Europe in the eventual future, maybe places in Asia, maybe places in South America. So uh, stay tuned for that. But I am just uh, stunned by this building. Nicole says, is this the city you want to back to? Yes, 100%. This is a city I can see myself living. It's just, it's that amazing. I really am just enjoying the, the vibe of the city, how vibrant it is. Every corner, there's something here. How are the tapas here? The tapas are good. So here we come at the end of the super block. So this is two different super blocks we're looking at right now. This is another super block and we just finished walking through one super block. So we basically walked the entire length of one super block. And the separation is that they opened up this road to all car traffic. So I'm going to get questions about the food. I know a lot of people love their Spanish food. I'm not the biggest fan um, of pure Spanish food. I like it. I like certain elements of it. I just, if I, if I were to stay here for a month, I would probably not be eating it every single day. And I think one of the factors that Spanish food does not attract me as much as other cuisines in Europe is because I grew up with Puerto Rican food. And Puerto Rican food has similarities with Spanish food. You know, they both use a lot of uh, rice in them, a lot of use of chicken, uh, a lot of use of pork and ham. But Puerto Rican food has what we call sazon, has a little bit of that extra vibrant flavor, not spiciness, but sazon. It's more of um, a use of herbs and, and uh, bay leaves and, and different elements that just gives an extra kick to it. 
And unfortunately here, I don't feel too much sazon. So I find myself having some good Spanish food, but asking for some spicy sauce <laughs> or some black pepper to add onto my food. So let me know, uh, especially if you're Latin America, especially if you're from the Caribbean Latin American, uh, what are your thoughts on Spanish food? Photo says Barcelona is great, but the food in general has been pretty good quality. Uh, the spectrum here is a bit bigger than Paris or uh, than France or Italy. France and Italy, you have pretty much ubiquitously good food almost everywhere. Greece as well. Greece is a country where there's great food everywhere around the country. Uh, you can go to some of the more crappier places to some of the best more fancy places you have great food so that's the case with those three countries here the spectrum is more similar to london or to new york you can find really bad food but you can also find really great food photo says did you visit the basque region no i've only been to madrid before uh, i have a few of those madrid videos i think could be found on facebook still and uh this trip was only Barcelona. I decided not to do a, a day trip because I just didn't have too much, too much time. Plus I wanted to take it easy and kind of wander around today. Marie says, I think Spanish food was okay. I love Greek food better. I love Greek food better. Yeah, for me, my personal f taste is Greek food. And I love this uh, will come to a shock to many people, even if you already know my show, I love my UK food, but uh, yeah, I like bigger plates. I like um, heavier, like things that I, I, I like eating my good three meals a day. I'd rather not have tiny little bites throughout the day. And I don't like so much focus on cured meats. I prefer a bit more fresher cuts of meat. So that's why I love uh, Greek food, English food, and uh, and classic American food. Nicole says, for whatever reason, we have a lot of Spanish restaurants in Germany. Yeah, I, I, let me know, Nicole, is, Nicole, have you been to, to, to Spain? If, if so, how does Spanish food compare in Spain versus Spanish food in Germany? Because Spanish food in the U.S. is a bit different. And I'm not sure if uh, the Spanish food in the U.S. is emulating more of a different region in Spain, maybe the Basque region, uh, or maybe the southern region, uh, Sevilla, Andalusia. But in New York, or Spanish food is a bit more, has a bit more like, um, like the Bahia, for example, has like red peppers in it, uh, um, chorizo, chicken, seafood, you know, it's a lot more of a vibrant Bahia. Here the Bahias are a bit more basic. Irene says, are you comfortable using Spanish? Is it difficult to understand? Yeah, you know, everyone here, basically everyone who lives here knows Castilian Spanish, unless if you're an expat. Uh, so yeah, it's been very easy to use Spanish here. And as I mentioned, the Spanish in Bar uh, the Castilian Spanish, Castilian Spanish is, in, in Spain, there's a few languages. Not, they're technically not all Spanish, but people might call them Spanish. Uh, so Castilian is what Madrid and people know as Spanish, and then all throughout Latin America, that's what they speak, Castilian. Castilian Spanish is closer to Puerto Rican Spanish. Puerto Rican Spanish is a bit more different than Mexican Spanish. So I found it easier to speak Spanish here than I did speaking Spanish in Mexico. Because in Mexico, some words that are just normal in Puerto Rican Spanish and Castilian Spanish 
are bad words in Mexico, uh, like coger, which means to grab. In Mexican Spanish, it means to have sex with, uh, <laughs> which is <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, the other one is uh, bizcocho, uh, which means just cake uh, in Puerto Rican Spanish. And here in Spain, it just means like a soft cake. But in Mexico and other parts of Latin America, bizcocho means genitalia. Uh, so yes, it, it's a bit more frustrating when it comes to uh, Latin American Spanish as opposed to here. All right, I got some uh, postcards to send, so let me... Uh... It's open nice. Photos from New York says, I thought pastel meant uh, cake. Pastel also means cake in Puerto Rican Spanish and Castilian Spanish. But here they use tarta uh, more often, at least in Barcelona. So I have all different postcards for mega urbanists. So thank you all the mega urbanists, people who contribute more than uh, $20 a month or more on patreon.com slash urbanists. You'll be getting some nice postcards. I also went to Picasso Museum, so some people are getting Picasso postcards. All these wonderful postcards. There we go. All right, who wants to have some proper Spanish food? Domino's Pizza. Kay says, patreon.com slash urbanist. Indeed, yeah. May I orient myself? May I walk one more block and then turn? Hey, Ron says, uh, in the Philippines, uh, the word for rice cake is puto. Yes, yes, uh, yes. You do not want to say that too well out loud in here in Spain. Chris says, no coffee, no food or water for me this morning. It's surgery day. Hey, Chris. Oh, man. Um, may you have a smooth surgery and may you have a very speedy recovery. Joe, nice to see you here. Marianne says postcards. Yep, Marianne, one of those postcards were yours. Photos from New York, says LOL. Yeah, yes, yeah, Spanish is a minefield. You know, English, we don't have too many of those big differences. You know, the Australians use the C word rather casually. Well, in America, it's the worst word you could really use, uh, which is very interesting. And then in, in, um, in British English, they use the F word for one of the F words for a cigarette. While in American English, it's also a very, very offensive word to use. So there are certain differences, but not too many, not too many. Uh, Spanish has more differences between Spain, parts of Latin America, and the Philippines. And most likely the Spanish spoken in uh, Africa. I forgot which is the main country that speaks Spanish in Africa. Do, do remind me. Uh, probably has also has some big differences. Chris says, thank you so much. I have a six week recovery, plenty of YouTube time. Hey, oh man, yeah. Um, it's a back surgery, Chris. Oh, do feel better. Yeah, 
Joe says this does not look like Manhattan. No. Hey, George says, oh no, you're standing by Domino's Pizza's Umbrellas. Their headquarters is about 35 miles away in Ann Arbor. It's about 35 miles away from you in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Hey, George. Thank you so much for tuning in. Indeed, they have a lot of Domino's here. So Nicole says, uh, um, Spanish food in Germany is very similar to Spanish food in Spain. Oh, okay. Kay says, I prefer Italian food to Spanish food. Yeah, you know, Kay, I was yesterday really craving a good uh, pasta carbonara. Steve says the F word in British English is also a nice uh, fish. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there is that fish. Uh, Nicole says Equatorial Guinea is the country where they speak Spanish. Thank you. Thank you. Linda, thank you so much for the stars, Linda. I appreciate you. Carmelo says, Buenas tardes, campeón. Hey, thank you so much, Carmelo. Says, Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Everyone, round of hearts for Chris. May he have a smooth surgery today. Does the Domino's have anything an American one doesn't, says eat the cake. I have not seen the menu. I would doubt it, but I haven't seen the menu. I know in Central Europe, the Domino's there had corn as a topping. Central Europeans, for some reason, like corn on their pizza. Adam says, did you check out the Mediterranean Sea? I did go to the beach yesterday. It was nice. It was lovely. The beach was very surprising. I thought it was going to be a rocky, kind of dirty beach. Because, you know, this is such a big city. I did not expect the beach to be nice. But no, it was nice sand, very clean, great beach. People were at the beach, even, the, even though it was like 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Irene says, in Chile, we also use a lot of idioms that people don't often understand uh, from other countries. Oh, interesting. I know the Argentinians. I know too much about Chile, but for Argentinians, yeah, there's certain words that also have very different meanings than uh, Puerto Rican Spanish or Castilian Spanish. Ron says, the Philippines have a lot of Spanish. Spanish words in its language of Tagalog, yes. Como esta acá, which comes from como estas. Susie says, check out Urbanist Stories on Instagram, yes. Go to Urbanist Live. Urbanist Live on Instagram and you'll see uh, all the stories where I do feature great um, extras, like views of the beach. I think we're getting close to lunchtime. It's pretty packed. Wow. Look at that. Yep. Chris says, my wife speaks Tagalog, but she's learning Spanish now and finds it easy. Yes. Yeah. I found myself also learning Tagalog a bit easier. 
Hey, Marit says, I have to go to Tyre. Have a nice trip. Hey, man, Marit, thank you so much for tuning in. Diana says, Woohoo, I caught you live. Diana, I'm glad you were able to catch me live. I love how Barcelona is so clean, says Jer, and the skies don't look polluted like coastal US cities. I would love to go back. There is also Domino's Pizzas in Mexico. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely worth it. I really love Barcelona. Very clean city. It's such a big city, but super clean. And uh, someone was telling me, oh, Barcelona is no Paris. I think Paris and Barcelona share a lot of elements. Uh, the type of architecture, it's almost ubiquitously in many parts of the city, like a Chample, about six to seven stories tall, sometimes a little bit more. Um, so you have a lot of this uniformity in the blocks. You have a lot of outdoor cafes, people sitting outside. Not as much as Paris, but almost. And a lot of the architecture is also 1800 style. And I find Barcelona to be way cleaner than Paris. I've been to a few parts of Barcelona so far. I've not really seen a really dirty area of Barcelona, aside from maybe a Raval, which is one of the neighborhoods here in the center. It's been mostly clean, mostly orderly. Here's one of the markets. Let's check out what's in the market. Si, buenas. This is buenas tardes. Buenas, si, buenas. Buenas tardes. Shanita says, this is so cool. I love your content. I'm so glad you do. We're wandering around Barcelona at Enchample. All right, let me see what's up here. See, when I says that you eat lunch, I ate a pretty big brunch. And right here is the supermarket. Oh, cool. Okay, this might be better than, than La Boqueria. Okay, this is legit. Okay, like two days ago, I went to La Boqueria, which is like the main food market in the center of the city, right by Las Ramblas. Super touristy. I did not like it, did not have a good impression of it. Uh, some food halls in touristy areas could be awesome. Some could be really big traps. I think this one, the other one was a really big trap. But I'm glad we bumped into this one. This one seems more authentic. And I'm hearing more Catalan and Spanish than I'm hearing uh, English or other languages. So it doesn't seem too touristy. Look at these hams. Spain so far has the best hams I've ever tried in the world. You can go far and wide, but Spain really takes its ham.
And they also have great cheeses too. Ron says this is not for vegetarians, no. Buenas. Tiene a jamón ibérico. A una porción pequeña, como medio, medio, a cuarta libra. What do you recommend? This is the most good. This is normal. Okay, the most good. This is the most good. Yes, this is the most good. Ah, cortado. Cortado. No, no, eso es bastante bien. <ríe> Perfecto. ¿Y tiene un queso bueno que combina bien? Un queso bueno que combina esto. ¿Cuál tú sugieres? Aquí una porción bien pequeña. ¿Qué, ¿Bien qué pequeña? Tú, sí, bien pequeña. ¿Esto? Sí. Mira. No, no, uh, algo cortado fresco. Um, Mucho mejor, ok. Ah, un poquito menos. Eh, está perfecto. Muy bien. Muchas gracias. Ah, se fue. ¿Qué más? Eso es todo. Por tarjeta, por favor. Gracias. ¿Cómo se llama? Ese es un queso manchego. Sí. Okay. Muchas gracias. Adiós. Buen día. Adiós. Ok. So I end up getting a jamón ibérico, which is known as the best ham in the world. And she seemed to have a very high quality one. Uh, in the touristy area, I would have been charged, because I got a pretty big portion. I said small, but she assumed it was small for the home. So I got plenty of ham for later tonight. Um, but in, in the tourist area, this one would cost me maybe $30. So I spend about $18, 10 for this. Chris says she didn't speak English to me. 
Yes, uh, I think the reason I've, I'm starting to realize why people might speak English is because I've been going to the touristy areas or to like brunch places or cafes uh, that more non Catalan, non Spaniards go to. So I think here it's just not really that touristy, so they just don't assume I'm a tourist, maybe. I think I'm gonna need some wine to combine with this. Is Barcelona food compared uh, expensive compared to Copenhagen? No, no, no. Food here is cheaper than New York, cheaper than uh, than London. Pretty much in line with Paris. You though you can find cheaper than Paris here, which is great. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a great market. Ah, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, if you want a more authentic experience, come here. Firestorm says, uh, so expensive for ham. Uh, Firestorm. It's expensive because it's the best ham in the world. It's like buying the finest red wine from France or uh, the finest Trappist beer in Belgium or the best cheese you can find in many other parts of Europe. That's, that's why it's so expensive. Uh, in the US, again, this would cost maybe $40 for this portion uh, because the US pays very, really steep importation fees. I am loving the vibe of this place, wow. I think lunchtime is coming to a close, or at least, oh no, no, the butcher shops are closing now. Oh, look at this. Pre made meals. Oh. Sarah says, what market am I at? Let me find the name for the market. I'll let you know in a bit. Ooh, nice restaurant in here. Let's see the name. Simply Mercats de Barcelona. Barcelona Market. Very simple name. So beautiful hams. Yeah, everyone come here rather than Boqueria. You can get a half a conejo, half a rabbit for 13. You can get a chudasco, which is a huge steak for 15 euro. That's good, good prices. That shop is all eggs. Wow. 
Wow, this is amazing. I gotta meet for a little bit. <laughs> All the dudes were <laughs> posing. <laughs> Kate says the food is displayed very lovely. It is, yeah. Oh, I'm loving this. Uh, I'm, even though I eat in, I'm tempted to grab more food. This fish looks so good. They're all so nicely orderly and so clean. It's a world of difference from uh, our experience in Mexico. Sobrasada, queso y miel. Buenas. ¿Está abierto para comer aquí? Sí. ¿Sí? Ah, ¿Me siento o ordeno aquí? Siéntate, cabra. Ok, gracias. gracias.
okay, I'm going to order um, a different type of cured meat because I already have my jamón ibérico and my manchego cheese. I'm gonna order something slightly different to try both of them and some wine. Let me know if you have any recommendations of what to try. Should I try another jamón ibérico and compare? Let me know what you think. I think I'm, I'm tempted to try this one. <laughs> uh, el, el plato uh, este de cinco jotas, por favor. Vale. Y el plato de cinco jotas. Sí, y un pan con tomate. Vale, pan uh, con tomate. Y hay algo pequeño de queso manchego, no, no tan grande, algo menos. No. Se vale, me... te puedo no. poner algo. ¿vale? Okay, okay. Sí. Okay. Y para beber. Ah, uh, vino ¿Quieres tinto. Vino blanco, vino tinto. Vino tinto. Cava, por favor. ¿qué quieres? Vino tinto. Y, vino agu tinto. y agua con gas. Y agua con gas no tenemos. Ok, no, está, está bien. Vino tinto. Agua con gas solo bichi, pero es para ponerle al, al vino, ¿no? No, no, separado. No, no. Ah, vale, sí. Ah, sí. pues bicho, por, eh, bichi, sí, por sí, favor. Bichi. Sí, vale. gracias. Mm. Ok, everyone. So, um, she's going to give me a little slices of cheese, I think, on the house, which is nice. Because I don't want to order a full plate of cheese. But uh, I ordered right now jamón ibérico. Even though I already got some, we're gonna have jamón ibérico cut by hand, um, which if they do it well, we'll see if they do, it's supposed to come out so thin that it almost looks like a piece of paper, which is great. Uh, like it, it's like translucent in a really good way. Uh, and it's supposed to like melt in your mouth. Uh, so I ordered the top of the top of jamón ibérico. Gracias. Estoy haciendo un video, so no. Sí, sí, ya okay. Veo, ya veo. Gracias. All right. Tiny little. Anthony says she's not European. She's from the Americas. Yes, lots and lots of uh, Latin Americans in um, in in Barcelona in general. It's a very multicultural city, lots of Latin Americans, lots of Filipinos as well. Um, yeah. So, I got some vio Vioja. I might get red for this because I'm slightly allergic to some wines. Sometimes I'm not, but a good, good majority of wines I am. So, I'm getting some Cune Vioja. Classic Spanish red wine. Uh, they call it here vino tinto, as opposed to vino rojo, as we might say in Puerto Rican Spanish. And the woman was so kind. <laughs> no, no, gracias. <laughs> uh, the woman was so kind enough to uh... Ooh, look at this. Wow. Okay. Sí, 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 puede, sí, sí, puede, sí. Con, sí eh. Te quería comentar sí. que el jamón no te lo puedo cortar a mano. Ah, ok, pues no te preocupes. Pues yo cojo algo diferente. Sí, lo puedo cortar a máquina. A máquina. Sí que hay, el jamón hay, pero no sí. te lo puedo cortar a, a mano. Ok, no, está bien. Sí, yo cojo algo, ¿cuál tú sugieres de máquina? Cojo este de... Es, es, es igual, o sea, si tú lo... Eh, 
Vale, sí, también. El... 5J sí. hace un... Eh... Te lo puedo cortar a máquina también. Ok, está bien, sí. yo tengo máquina. Solo que el chico, sí. la persona que corta sí. a mano, ha ido a comer. Ah, ok, oh, no, okay. no te preocupes, sí. Entonces me da cosa llamarlo, que venga, está en su hora de comida. Eso está bien, sí, sí. ¿Sí? sí. Entonces te pongo el... el... Sí, dame este, sí. Vale. En, en, en esa distancia, gracias. No, no, no te preocupes. Salud, or how they say here, chin chin. So unfortunately, uh, the man who is the ham cutter is on his lunch break. So I'm not having the finest of Iberian hams. But that's okay. We're having a Iberian ham. Cheers. Salud. Ooh. Wow. That's really good. Wow. It's um it's very bright. It's almost like like apples. Apples and pears. It has a apple and pear taste to it. Hmm. And Brett, Brett, thank you so much for the super chat. Brett left the super chat earlier today. Uh, Brett, Brett, thank you so much for the super chat. I really uh, appreciate you. Uh, let me know what Brett wrote. Oh, right here. Love your content. Fun and informable, informative. Thank you so much, Brett. Uh, so uh, Brett is sponsoring part of this meal. Brett sponsoring the wine. Thank you so much, Brett. And the cheese. Thank you. What notes? To me, it's like apples and pears. Very, very pear. Very, very pear tasting. Yeah. yeah. It has that kind of like... Very fruity. Very, very fruity. Christy says, it's like I'm walking around with you. Oh, okay. yeah, that's so good. I'm glad. And the butcher needs a break time too. Yeah, I think I, think I just came out the wrong, wrong time. I think I just came just slightly after uh, peak lunchtime. It's hard, it's hard, you know, like uh, the times here in, in Spain, I'm just not used to the eating times. They're different from what I'm used to. And then you go some. You go to some cities like New York, London, Paris. You can basically eat anytime you want. But Spain is quite different, including Barcelona. Um, if you want to eat the best and not spend too much, you will have to adjust to the times that they eat here. So really good wine. This is excellent wine. And this is my favorite water, Bichi Catalan. Has a little bit of a salty taste to it because it's very, very heavy mineral water. But this one's amazing. Ooh. You might be shocked if you have Bichi Catalan because it does have a salty taste to it. And don't worry, your water's fine. That's the point. It combines really well with good Spanish food, with tapas, especially if you're having a lot of alcohol. And it quenches your thirst faster, ironically, by having that slight salty flavor to it. I love this water. Sparkling waters in Barcelona are amazing. Very, very strong on the mineral flavors. I wonder where they get them from. This one has to be from the Catalan region. Uh, bueno, muchas gracias. ¿Quieres eh, un tenedor? Un tenedor, sí, yeah, perfecto.
Qué bien, sí. Y un, y un orden pequeño de queso manchego, por favor. Ah, sí. Sí, gracias. One thing I've noticed here, I'm not sure if this is a specific, a specific Spaniard thing, I think it is. People linger eye contact longer than uh, Latin America or, or North America. Well, North America, because I really haven't been to South America. Uh, people here linger more eye contact than North America or than, say, UK or, cent or, or, uh, or even France. But look at this. So here we have jamón ibérico, not cut by hand, not cut by hand. And then next time <laughs> I come to Spain, uh, but still pretty thin, still pretty thin cut, similar to what I have here. I'll have that later after this in order to do a taste comparison. Uh, some pan con tomate and lots of olive oil. Ooh, this is really drenched in olive oil. And sometimes they scrape it with uh, garlic bread, a uh, garlic on the bread. It's not with garlic, but they scrape a little bit of garlic. So as this is a hint of garlic. But I'm super excited to try this out. So Spain also does what is called a split shift. So Spain, uh, people work in two different four hour shifts with a three hour lunch break. And that's why right now things are very calm because we are at that three hour lunch break. really good mm. it has a slimy feel mouth feel to it which is great slightly greasy mm. a bit fatty as well mm. that's great that is a delectable ham. Wow. Uh, Muchas gracias. Lo tienes. Perfecto. That's it. All right. So really. Mm. Wow. Maria says, "Don't drop any of the ham. One, one ran away." But that's a lot of ham. This, this, this would be to share between two people. And here we have queso manchego. I don't like the fat on it. Oh, that's the point of a, a good Iberian ham. Pan con tomate, which is bread with tomato, lots of olive oil, and nice manchego cheese. And this one is really unique, has a lot of texture to it. That's interesting. And the wine, Cune Rioja, really great wine. I'm really digging it. Nice little portion. I'm going to spend maximum 30 euro here. Let me check that on. It's a lot of food for one, says uh, K. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. Yeah, that's why I was asking her if there was a smaller portion, but lo and behold, there wasn't. I could have ordered a, a, a sandwich, but I felt like having the ham on its own.
This cheese has a lot of funk. Has a very deep flavor to it. That's really good. Mm. Mm. That's a really good cheese really full flavored, heavy body. It has a very crumbly texture to it. Not like feta, but like a harder crumbliness to it. Wow, that's really good. That cheese is so kind of punchy that it cuts through all the fattiness of of this uh, jamón ibérico. So this is manchego cheese. If I'm correct, it's goat cheese. Manchego. Mm. That's it, that's it. Adriana says, is the cheese grilled? No, it's not grilled. It's uh, served as is. I don't think grilled cheeses here are that frequent, unless if you're having something in like a croquette form. Hey, Camila, this is Buen Gustario. Gustario. Oh, thank you so much. Eugene says it's St. Patrick's bank holiday this weekend. And Linda says, you're making me hungry. Firestorm says, why don't you share this food with me? <laughs> Once I uh, end up getting a multi-billion dollar budget, which I'll partly get from Elon Musk because the, the man just has so much money. Um, I'm sure he'll give money to this. I'll make a proprietary urbanist food repli replicator that you can enjoy the food. You buy this machine, you enjoy the food. As I'm eating it, you end up getting a version materialized for yourself, just like in Star Trek. Just like in Star Trek. That will happen. I don't know what the timeline is going to be on this. It might be 2040. It might be 2200. At some point in my very, 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 very long life, I will provide you with a urbanist replicator that you can really enjoy all the food live at home. Mm. Wow, so feel free to ask me anything. I'm gonna eat for like a few more minutes and then I'm gonna ask the rest to go. Uh, and then we're gonna continue walking around beautiful Barcelona. Adriana says, that's an awesome idea. Indeed it is. 3.45 p.m. Barcelona time. 
Yeah, that's why uh, that's why things are closed. This is siesta time. I came just like uh, like 45 minutes too late, 50 minutes too late. So if you want to go to this market, come to this market at 2 p.m. I think it's peak time. It'll be worth it because uh, almost all the, everything will be open. Maybe it'll open up later at night. Maybe at 7 p.m. this opens up again. I'm not entirely sure. Or maybe it's just a lunch thing. Uh, when you travel to Europe, do you take an electric adapter or a converter? Oh, that's a great question, Adriana. I um, bring an adapter. I, I get um, I get the iPhone charger, my laptop charger, and a four USB port charger. And each of those, those are three different chargers. I just bring those three. And each of those, I have an adapter uh, for either your, that can switch between European or UK because that's what I've used so far in my travels. And the default is the American adapter. Um, and then if I need to, I can switch to Chinese or Korean or there's a few other adapters out there. Uh, but those are the two I've encountered thus far. I use one, is Search Anchor, A-N-K-E-R, uh, for the multi-port charger. So search Anchor International or Anchor, um, yeah, Anchor International, you should find it on Amazon. I might add a link to these adapters later. And then I just buy the proprietary Apple chargers uh, in order to use that. Oleg asks, I need more Gaudi related places. I have one more. I'm walking in that general direction. Uh, let's see if we can get there. There's one more. Tony says, we have a great overcast day here in Sweden. You, your Barcelona adventures really brightened my day. I'm so glad. I'm so glad, Tony. That's awesome here. Thank you. Mmm, this is a great lunch. Mmm. Brett says, I'm going to the Bronx. Can you recommend a good hotel? I don't know too many hotels in the Bronx off the top of my head. Um, I may... I met, I met someone once that was running one of the ho historic hotels in the Bronx. I forgot the name. Maybe I'll try to find uh, their email and see if I can cover it at some point. Uh, however, I would recommend in general in New York City, stay in Times Square. It sounds like super touristy, because it is. But ironically, you'll find the cheapest hotels in Times Square. Uh, and it's super centralized, so you won't be spending much money trying to get around if you use public transportation. And you have almost every line that you need to get anywhere from Times Square, including up to the Bronx. So Times Square is my recommendation of where to stay. Uh, if you try staying in anywhere in downtown Manhattan, like uh, the, anywhere in the village, uh, you'll be spending way more money. Um, if you try to stay uptown Manhattan, Uptown Manhattan is great, but I would recommend, especially if it's your first time, stay in Times Square. We'll be going to Park Güell, says Chris. I went yesterday. I was really disappointed. Uh, Park Güell just did not have much to offer, in my opinion. Alan About recommends Oyo Hotel. 
Oh, is that the meat cutter behind me? Maybe it was. But, um, no, the, the ham is still pretty damn good. I think getting hand cut ham is just something very specialty. Um, it's not 100% necessary. But George says the combination you chose looks and sounds delicious. I just realized today's pie day. I do have to have a pie. Yeah. I'm not sure if Catalans have too much pies. Frances dice, mmm, pernil y queso, mejor que paella en Barcelona. Sí, Frances dice que mejor que la paella en Barcelona. Uh, Frances says, uh, this combination is even better than paella. Yo creo que sí. La, la paella, tú sabes, yo no he visto tantas paellas que se ven tan buenas. Yo probé ya dos paellas y estaba medio... Um, medio... Um, no me gustó tanto. Yo no sé cómo se dice disappointed. How do you say disappointed in Spanish? But no me gustó tanto las paella. So uh, I did enjoy... I do enjoy this combination. I've had two paellas so far. I did not like them too much. They were okay. Uh, and I've seen paellas as I'm walking around. They didn't stick out to me too much. They seem overly greasy. I like my paellas kind of in the bigger pot as opposed to the wide pot, which is of course the traditional. So paella is a rice dish. It's usually made in this wide pot. That is called, in Catalan, a paella. That's the name of the dish. Uh, and then that's the name of the actual thing you cook it on. And the dish name is also paella. However, I like, at least in, in the US, uh, a few places make it in a pot, like a stew pot. And I like the paella there because it's more, more fluffy, more moist. Uh, it's not as greasy and as uh, hard uh, as, as the big, big one. So, yeah, I haven't seen too much paellas that I would generally enjoy so far. Oleg says, if you decide to fight a bull, it'll be the only time I'll be on the side of the matador, which is the bullfighter, or so literally translates into the killer, uh, then the bull. Cheers to that, Oleg. Maybe I'll do that in my next live stream. Maybe when I go to Seville, we'll do some live bullfighting. Let me know if you want to see that. All right, I'm going to have a few more bites, and now I'm out of here. Um... Let me know if you want to continue exploring Barcelona here in Spain. Farstorm says, I love a good steak and kidney pie with chips. Oh yeah, that's my favorite type of food, personally. Do you feel Barcelona lacks history compared to London, Paris, or Rome? It definitely has a lot of history. Not as epic as Rome, as long as Rome, not as interesting or like varied as Paris and then London has just so much history in general uh, and New York as well Barcelona has a plenty of history I think it just um, you have to dig in deeper in order to really learn the history quickly uh, that was the case for me in Madrid I couldn't it's not history I just learn going to school and just reading history in general. I had to really dig in deep in order to find the really interesting history bits of Madrid and the same thing applies to Barcelona, which I haven't had the time to do.
Pitwek says, do you miss Poland and pierogi? Yes. Yeah. I love Polish food. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I can spend way more time in Poland and, and Central Europe in general. But Polish food really astounded, uh, outstanded me. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. Uh, Oleg says, have you been to Ibiza? No, I have not. Not yet. Let me one day. When are you coming back to Europe, says Nicole. Nicole, isn't it enough? Haven't I been to Europe enough, Nicole? I went to two weeks all throughout Europe, and people were like, when are you coming back? And I came back in two days. Two days I came back. And now yet again, I'm getting the question, okay, it's good that you're here. When are you coming back? Are you, are you satisfied? Are you not entertained? Are you entertained? I want to really scream that, but, you know, I have to be polite. But really, are you not entertained? That was a great one. I'm getting very stuffy with this cheese. Cheese does not agree with me. So pardon if I sound nasally. It's not because my New Yorker is coming out. It's because of the cheese. Nicole says, I'm happy when you settle down in Europe. Ray says, I look like I'm in an interrogation room. Yes, where I'm being force-fed amazing ham and cheese. Yeah. I'm in the food market right now. Nico says, it's nice to see you Barcelona. Nicole says, I love New York, but uh, Europe is your home. I really feel a deep connection with Europe, for sure, for sure. I could definitely, I want to spend many more months here in Europe. Uh, Camilla says, you're wanting both coasts. Uh, so... Um, so both live in New York and in Europe. Yes, indeed. All right, I'm really full. Oh my God, that was a lot of food. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this. Maybe I could donate it to someone. <coughs> but that was really good. Whew. Wow. I'm gonna have a nice picnic later with the rest of the ham. Have you explored Toronto? Out and about. Funnily enough, I met uh, a couple who was from Toronto at one of the food tours I took. And uh, I asked him, hey, what's good to see in Toronto? He's like, nothing. <laughs> Just come to Europe. <laughs> uh, so uh, that particular couple did not have the highest opinion of their city. Uh, though I still want to go to Toronto at some point, for sure. Nicole says, I'm waiting for the red face comments. Indeed, yes, indeed. Yeah. It's all this cheese and wine. Ooh. I'm gonna need uh, too much cheese. I only have like two slices of this. I'm good with the ham. I'm, I know I'll have more cheese. Please, no more. You're so blessed that you do this for a living, says Adriana. I am indeed, yes. I am indeed. <sighs> All right, let's pay. No, la cuenta, por favor. Y estaba excelente. Así es. ¿Tarjeta? Tarjeta, sí, por favor. Ahí no es. 
Oh, ok. Oh, aquí, aquí, aquí. Ok, okay. okay perfecto. ¿A qué hora se llena más esta, este mercado? mercado? Tú tienes que venir es por la mañana. Por la mañana, en ok. En la tarde está todo cerrado. Ah, ¿eso por y qué? Y los sábados sí. solamente hasta las dos y media. ¿Dos y todo media? Todo cierra. Oh, bien temprano. Sí, oh, bien temprano. Wow. O okay. sea, que si tú quieres venir y, sí. y, y ver un poco más de movimiento, sí. tienes que venir en la mañana. Y, a partir de las 10, 11, porque ya a las 2 ya no hay nadie por aquí. ¿Y cuál es el tiempo de almuerzo que todo el mundo eh, está comiendo? Pues... Eh, oh. A la una y media, dos. Una y media, ojo, oh, bien poco. Es, sí, porque, ah. sí, porque la gente, por ejemplo, que sale sí. de los trabajos por aquí cerca de los sí. hospitales, vienen a comer aquí, pero temprano. Ah, ¿eso por qué? Ok, sí. entiendo. Entonces, okay. No, no, ya, por ejemplo, ah. mira, ahora no sí. hay nadie. No, 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 no hay nadie. Tienes que venir Demasiado. en la mañana. En la mañana sí que está... Pues esto es mucho mejor que la boquería, que fue al lado de la, las ramblas. ¿Qué te gusta más, la boquería? Esto, no, esto, mucho mejor. Bueno, sí está bien. La sí. boquería eh, está muy repleto, ¿no? A mí no. Exactamente, sí. A mí no me gusta estar mucho así, mucha, mucha gente. Tiene que estar cuidado del bolso, de que Eso no, también, sí. De todo, de todo, que no te roben, porque ahí, aquí, aquí de verdad te digo que aquí yo no he escuchado que han robado a nadie, <risa> ni nada. Muy tranquilo aquí. Sí, claro, sí, porque no hay tanto turista, ¿verdad? No, que no... Turistas sí, sí pero ¿Vienen? de repente. De repente, sí, Más sí. Más vienen japoneses, americanos. Ah, yo soy de Nueva York. Ah, ah, originalmente de Puerto Rico. Ah, de Puerto Rico. Sí, sí, sí. Ah, sí. vale, vale. Ah. ¿Estás por aquí de vacaciones? Ah, de vacaciones, sí, sí. De Puerto Rico, sí. Oh, Dominicana, oh, qué bien. Sí, eh, sí. sí. Ah, me encanta. De República Dominicana también, sí. Él es de Colombia. De Colombia, wow. Sí, y yo soy de Ecuador. Muchos latinos aquí. Sí, claro. Sí, es como Nueva York. Sí, yeah. sí, sí. Ah, ponte po po una copia, por favor. Estamos liderando ya. Sí, sí, exactamente. La de conquista. Sí, sí. Ah. <ríe> Tengo un buen día. Oh, bye. Okay, let me translate uh, outside. Uh, that was a great conversation. I'm not sure if anyone has already translated in the comments. That was great. So, uh, wow, that wine was strong. Having wine with just ham really hits you. So uh, she was saying that by 2 p.m. it's pretty much empty. By 2.30 it's pretty much empty. Uh, a lot of people who come to this market come in the morning to do their shopping or come for a very early lunch uh, because they have lunch around 1.30 uh, because there's like hospitals and other bigger office buildings here. And between 1.30 to about 2, to 2.30 p.m. is when most people are having lunch here. She says, come here in the early in the morning to see more life. And um, she also mentioned that um, the guy, he's, he's a Colombian married to a Dominican, uh, the, the ham cutter, and the woman is Ecuadorian. And I was joking around with her saying uh, that this is La Reconquista because there's so many Latin Americans here. And the word Reconquista means to reconquer to take over and it's a I'm not sure if she got it because she's Ecuadorian but it's a joke between Mexicans and Americans because uh, America took a huge chunk of of what used to be Mexican lands during the Mexican American War and when Mexicans have been moving back into uh, those former parts of Mexico like Texas uh, parts of uh, New Mexico Arizona they call it la reconquista, meaning that they're reconquering those areas. I'm not sure if the joke translates it, but she found it very funny. And she did like a hand motion uh, with her wrist. Uh, she did like this, which I assume she was saying, oh, that's too naughty, that's too naughty. So there we go. S says, have you tried Spanish haggis? No, I have not. All right, let's see what they have here. It's 
So it looked, looked, it looked like a good uh, place to eat. Chris says uh, she sounded very Ecuadorian. Yes, yes, she was indeed. So that was Mercat de Barcelona. Mercat is Mercado in Spanish or Market in English. Mercat de Barcelona. Ooh. Bonsai coffee, all right. Okay. Okay, so uh, Bob heard that I was having lunch. And Bob does this a lot, you know. I tell him I'm having lunch, I'm doing work, I'm, I'm making this, these live videos. And he asks if he can join. And you know, Bob, Bob is a pain because, you know, he's a nice guy, but I invite Bob and he invites, you know, a hundred of his Bobettes. He invites Frank, uh, the burly pigeon. He invites everyone. And Bob, you know, he, he uh, comes anyway, even though I don't invite him, he still comes. He's still like waiting outside. He does this, you know, it's just to guilt trip me, like saying, hey man, like I'm here. Why, why haven't you treated me to some to some jamón ibérico. Who is Bob among all of them right here? That's Frank. Many of these other ones are his Bobettes. <laughs> Excuse me. Almost, yeah, almost says all the new users are completely confused. Here on Urbanist, we do explain our jokes. So do feel free to explain in the comments and let everyone know exactly. What's the, what's the, what's the, what the, what's the scoop? Or rather say, what's the coop? All right, let's do a, a taste comparison uh, with, um, with this other ham. Oh, the Roberto the Pigeon. Yeah, the Roberto the Pigeon was, uh, Roberto was from uh, Mexico, I think. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have that coffee because that wine hit me pretty hard. Uh, but before I have that coffee, let me have just a little bit of the jamón ibérico that I bought from the butcher. So let's see how it is. And then we're going to go. Look at that. Wow, that's looking good. This one's greasy as F. Oh my, wish me luck. Poor fingers. There we go. Oh, Thomas says in Latin America, la de conquista means the Spaniards taking over Latin America. Oh my God. I might have said something deeply offensive to that poor Ecuadorian woman. Uh, I think she got my joke. Uh -oh. I got bird poo on me. Bird poo fell on me. A big one. Yeah. A big bird poo fell on me. I'm not going to bother cleaning it because it's all, I'll just let it dry and I'll clean it later. All right. Wow. This one's way better. Mmm. This one's softer. It has more of a Ooh. Tony says, I just, I, 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 uh, I got the wrath of Bob's revenge. I did indeed. Ooh. Wow. When I asked her for the best, she gave me the best, the butcher. This is an amazing jamón ibérico. Super soft. It's really melty. The other one was really good. 
but this one is even more. It's just so nice and soft. It's, it's really creamy, the texture. The other one had a little bit more of a stringy texture to it, but this one has a very creamy texture to it. Ooh, ooh, wow, that is a, that is an amazing, amazing jamón ibérico. Wow, go to that butcher at the end of the market. I'm gonna try a little piece of manchego cheese. Okay, this manchego, she told me the region, I forgot, but she said it um, in the video. Ooh, it's not as sharp. The other one was super sharp that I had in the sit-down place. This one is um, has a creamier, more milky flavor to it. I think it combines really well with the jamón ibérico because it doesn't cut through the jamón ibérico. That's a great cheese. That butcher did a great job. I'm really going to enjoy this later tonight. Arg! How bad is the damage? Let me know. I can't. I can't see it because it's in my back. Uh, but let me know. There we go. Is it bad? Do I have just like a huge shriek of Bob's poo on my on my back? Ah, the first siren in Barcelona. We've been here for an entire week. I've done four live videos at this point. Not even one siren. It's in your hair, says uh, K. Oh no. Is it in my hair? Do I need to take a shower after this? Am I going to catch the bird flu? Let me know. All right, I'll grab napkins here at Bonsai Coffee. Susie says, go take a, a, a shower, we'll wait. <laughs> With all this, uh, that, that bird, you know, had quite a lot inside. Ah, oh, buenas. Hello, Un americano, por favor. Un americano, vale. Y una botella de agua también, natural. Natural, sí. americano. ¿Cómo este? No, dame pequeño. Pequeño. Sí, sí. Do, doble, 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 po, poco, poco agua. Vale. Y déjame probar también un hojicha pound cake, sí. Sí, perfecto. No tiene natural? It's not no. natural. Oh, sin, sin, sin gas? It's sin gas. Oh, okay, sí, sí, está bien. No, para qué? No, 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 no. No, sí, sí, eso sí, perfecto. Sí, Eh, ¿De Japón? Sí. Oh, qué bien. ¿De qué área? Uh, Kobe. ¿sabes Kobe. Kobe. Oh, Kobe, donde comen la, el beef. Kobe el, beef. Sí, Kobe sí. beef. Sí, oh, qué bien. Muy bueno. ¿Cuánto tiempo ha estado aquí en España? Dos. 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 D
años. Dos años, dos meses solamente, oh, wow. Daño, el año pasado, sí. estudiando en la universidad Ah, wow. Diez meses. Diez meses, oh, bastante. Pero estudiar con in, in inglés, economía. Inglés, also you know English as well. Yeah. Oh, wow, wow you uh, sabe español muy bien también. No, I'm still learning. It's <laughs> so, so, so difficult. But Spanish is probably easier to learn than, than English for, as a Japanese, right? Yeah, the Because it's super similar. Yeah. So that's why we uh, kind of know how to pronounce. Uh, but it's still difficult. It is difficult. Right. I don't know, like, it just. I'm not familiar, I was not familiar with Spanish. Yeah. But like English, we have a lot of like same word. Oh, I see, I see. Oh, like movies. Movies, oh, that's yeah, what. Yeah, that's why I, I knew kind of. Oh, good, good, good. Come on. Pero. Tranquilo. Hey, tienes servilleta, napkins. Napkins? Yeah. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Coffee and a and a pound cake here at this Japanese cafe, which is awesome. Shows the multiculturalness of Barcelona. I'm kind of stunned how multicultural it is. Because uh, of course I know Paris and London are very multicultural, but I thought Barcelona would be more similar to Italy. Uh, but no, no, it's a pleasant surprise. So, all right, let's have some. I got napkins and luckily, clean some of it. Oh, thank you so much. If you need more water, just tell me. Okay, perfect. Arigato. Arigato. <laughs> Alright. Cool. So there we go. So a nice little coffee, a pound cake. There we go. That looks good. And I got some uh, natural water, still water. Here they say agua natural, which means it translates to natural water. Basically means still water. Okay. Susie says, do you carry wet wipes? I have wet wipes at home, at my, in my luggage, not on me. I might need to go back home and take a shower before I go back out again. All right, let's try this out. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Hojicha is really good. Hojicha is like, um, if I recall correctly, it's like, um, it's like the matcha version of black tea. It's like a toasted, roasted, powderized black tea, if I'm correct. And it's really good. Um, you get that really strong roasted flavor from it. Definitely not for everyone. It has a very unique flavor to it, but it's really, really good. So it's a hojicha pound cake. Hojicha, if I'm correct, is like powderized black tea. So it has a very kind of strong, sharp flavor to it. 
very roasty too. Mm. Oh. Intense. There's so much wind that my camera's about to fly away. I gotta hold it. Cheers. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. Wow. It's a great coffee. Raphael says, don't forget to uh, save a piece for Bob. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. I can't have all of this. I'm really full. I'm going to have the rest to go. But uh, maybe I should. Wow. Barcelona is a windy city. For sure. Oh, that's good. Have you been to the uh, Picasso Museum? I did go to the Picasso Museum, Catherine. And I really enjoyed it. It was a really great museum. I do recommend it. You get to see the full spectrum of Picasso's work from young, when he was really drawing as good as some of the masters. He recreated some paintings from like Rembrandt and uh, the painting of Las Meninas. He, like, he was really good at recreating classic style art. And he was able to do realism, he was able to do still lifes. The man was super talented. And you got to see his, his, his range as later on in life he went more abstract, more cubist. And it was really fascinating because most people think Picasso was just a pure surrealist or cubist painter. And they think, oh, well, this guy painted that way because he can't really paint like the style of like Rembrandt. But no, he can. He can. And I saw that in person, which is amazing. Chris says, is Barcelona a good coffee city? I would say no. No, Barcelona has good coffee. Uh, a lot of the bars I went to to have like some food and tapas, there was a good espresso. Uh, there are some good coffee shops like this one here, Bonsai. Um, there's some great brunch places. They have good coffee as well. But I wouldn't say it's a coffee city. Um, there's not that many specialty coffee shops around. And there's not that many cafes where you can just sit down and linger. You can get your coffee at a bar where people are mostly drinking as opposed to drinking coffee. So I would say no. It, there's good coffee here, but it's not a coffee city. Like uh, many parts of Italy, Paris is becoming a coffee city slowly. Uh, or n not like London, for sure. Or I got that vibe in Berlin, seemed like a coffee city as well. Hein says, uh, Picasso's blue period. Yes, you do get to see Picasso's blue periods. Nicole says, there are lenses that darken as you go out into the sun, so you don't have to switch them. I don't like those. I don't like transition lenses. I'd, I'd rather have two distinct lenses uh, because I, I sometimes like just wearing my sunglasses indoors and then coming back outdoors. Or I like wearing my glasses outdoors. And uh, Need Helado with the pancake says, uh, uh, Susie, you need some ice cream with the pancake, yes. Yeah, that would be nice. And uh, Irwin says, nice to be in Barcelona, I love this city. Yeah, me too. Let me show you a little bit more of the views as I finish up this coffee. Enjoy.
excuse me, do you have a small bag to take the rest of the cake to go? Yeah. 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 No, no worries. And the coffee was amazing. Yeah. Really good. Oh, nice, nice. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. You as well. Okay, so this was Bonsai Coffee. I recommend it. It was nice. All right, let's continue walking. Excuse me. Grand News says, why were you not speaking in Spanish? Uh, Grand News, the reason was that the woman behind the counter, I usually don't show um, people's faces uh, without their, if, if I don't get like explicit or implicit uh, permission. But uh, the woman behind the counter is Japanese. She's a student and she said that uh, she knows English uh, but she just started learning Spanish and that she feels more comfortable speaking English. So I just spoke in English. But the woman knew, knew pretty good Spanish as well. She was able to get by. Have you experienced some Barcelona nightlife? No, I passed by in the Gothic Quarter. There was a few like Irish pubs that were packed. I didn't go inside, but... That's, that's so far the nightlife I've seen from outside. And then when I went to the beach yesterday, I could tell that a lot of those restaurants on the beach side were big clubs at night. But no, I haven't experienced it. Yvonne says, do I have any plans to go to Istanbul? No, not at the moment. Firestorm says, you sure love to eat. Uh, Piwex says, when a bird poops on your head, it's a blessing and a sign of good luck. <laughs> Indeed it is. Indeed it is. I got extra good luck because that, that bird, for some reason, had a lot in him. Uh, so it seems like I got a good whopping of good luck. Nico says, what part of Barcelona are we in? We're in the Chample. The spelling of the name, you'll find it in the title of this video, El Chample. I'm not sure what Chample means. I think El Chample might be very similar to Shams in French. Champa is a pretty big neighborhood, lots of stuff here. I don't think we left the neighborhood. The neighborhood has a few kind of micro sections. And I think they're divided by left and right, if I'm correct. Yvonne says, thank you. Good to see you in another adventure. Hey, I'm so happy that you're enjoying this live broadcast. As 
they say in Spain, video in directo. There's also an Arc de Triomphe in Barcelona, says Chris. Yes, I can imagine that there is, yeah. So right here we see the Catalan flag. Sometimes it has a star, sometimes it doesn't. Or the star in the blue triangle, sometimes it doesn't. Owen says, is this your first time in Barcelona? Yes, it is. And I'm loving it, I'm getting good vibes from Barcelona. I'm really enjoying the, the people here. It's great. Oh my, look at this stunning piece of architecture. Wow, how did they make such elaborate buildings? You know, you, we have to put ourselves in the, if you're an American, take this into consideration. This part of Barcelona was built around the same time that many major American cities were being constructed as well. Why in America don't we have architecture this beautiful in mass? You know, parts of New York, of course, a lesser part of Boston, yeah, some parts of Philly, but wow. <laughs> America could have had this, but we never decided to do that style of urban planning. Except for New York, really, you saw you know, Barcelona feels to me like a huge Upper West Side, just to, due to the height of the buildings and the architectural style. Yeah, here's another little coffee shop. Look at that. Guantanamo says, not as much graffiti as other cities, no. Barcelona, uh, Madrid, in direct comparison, had w way more uh, graffiti. Uh, and definitely a lot less than most of Greece. Lorraine says, so beautiful, oh yes. Adriana says, beautiful city, yes. It is a beautiful city. It's a gorgeous city, I, I, like, this is so, such a well-designed city. It feels so friendly to walk around, so much life on the streets. You know, while Greece has a lot of chaotic energy in its cities, Barcelona is very orderly, but both of them are filled with life. And I enjoy more than kind of the German style of urban planning, because while it has similar elements, there's entire sections in German cities where they're much quieter. But here you have life pretty much everywhere. Dario says, if you still can, try Bar Cañete near La Boqueria. Classic dishes, nice atmosphere. Have to try El Cochinito Ibérico. Ooh, thank you so much for the recommendation. Hi, it says, Southern Europe hasn't embraced the electric vehicles yet. I think they have here in Spain. Chris says, it seems like you could walk everywhere and not need the subway. Yes. Yes. Uh, it is very easy to just stroll and not need metro to get to most places. Though, the city is big. So, sometimes um, the metro is, is very useful and buses as well are very useful to get from one side of the city to the other.
Hmm. I wonder what this is. This seems to be a university building, maybe? Clinic Barcelona. Universita de Barcelona. Yes, this is the hospital university. This is the medical school of Barcelona right here. Wow. And the crazy thing is America, many of American cities were starting to be built like this. Uh, and if you see photos of cities all around America, and especially their, t their town centers, you start seeing architecture similar to what we're seeing here in Barcelona, uh, like Des Moines or Pittsburgh or Chicago or Minneapolis. All right, let me know if you see me and hear me once again. I think uh, we came across a very big, big dead zone with the med medical university for some reason. Hey, Picard, nice to see you here. Hi, it says love to see you here. Bell says, Americans are all... So Bell says, Americans are all about comfort and practicality. Same for the way they dress. What is this? <laughs> oh, that's a weird donut. So now we are at one of the main streets and we have reached that, a stop for the metro, the L5, a hospital clinic stop. So it seems like we're in the main medical area of the city. Hence, that's why a lot of people out and about. Okay, let me know if you see me and hear me once again. Um, pretty slow service here. And I think it's because there's so much happening. There's metro, there's these bigger buildings maybe. I'm not sure, something's interfering. anyone out there? Hello? Hola, bon dia. Bonjour, buongiorno. Ni hao. Konnichiwa. Jeanne Dobri. Someone out there, anyone? Can you hear me?
<laughs> Susie K. All right, everyone says we're here. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm back. Ooh, the 59 bus. That goes to the beach. Right here. Now we're in the busy work area and it's still it's nice to still see a busy work area in the big city you know so in new york that's slowly disappearing due to remote work so there's not that much vibrant office life in some parts of the city as there used to be how does barcelona compare with paris athens or others in terms of living here Athens is a super hectic city. It's chaotic. And I love it. Uh, I love it because of its chaos. But yes, it's way more chaotic. So, and Athens is grungier. So Athens also uh, offers a lot less uh, need for living expenses. Barcelona is probably more expensive. Barcelona probably is not as expensive as Bar uh, Paris, though. Paris is really a big, big, gigantic city. It's the biggest metropolis that there should, I think it is the biggest metropolis in all of Europe, or at least uh, in the top three. So, Paris, you need to learn French. Um, you can get by with English, but it'll pay off in dividends to know French. Here, I get the vibe that you can get by with English. Athens, you can get by with English as well. Athens will probably be the number one uh, city out of those three for English. This is a, uh, number two, and number three would be Paris. Uh, in terms of expenses, Paris probably would be the most expensive. Barcelona probably a very close second. Athens probably a very distant third. But Paris is more, it's everything. It's like New York. It's both big, chaotic, and orderly. You have a grid system, you have beautifully designed streets, there's a sense of where the neighborhoods are. It's definitely uh, ordered in that way, just like New York, but it's also very hectic because the city is huge. So Paris is kind of those both worlds. Barcelona feels just more orderly in general, and then Athens is just pure chaos, I think. So that's, I think, the differences between those three cities. Mayan says, attendance, attendance check, <laughs> I'm here. Hey Mayan, thank you so much for tuning in. So someone left a great comment. Bell Boy says, Americans are all about comfort and practicality, even the way they dress. Beauty and art are not the main concern. You're very European. I would say, Bay, that yes, you make a good point. Americans don't put as high priority in beauty and aesthetics as uh, they do here in Europe. But to say that this, these buildings, the architectural beauty of these buildings, uh, the, the layout of Paris, Barcelona, Rome, is not practical, it's not functional, is actually very incorrect. I think we think in America that we have a very practical way of living. I don't think that's the case. I think as we live in many American cities, it's very impractical. We just think it is practical. It's like wearing a good pair of sweatpants. You might think sweatpants are practical, but it's quite the opposite. A pair of sweatpants can get dirty very easily. They rip. They look shaggy and raggedy after a while. Um, you just don't look good. So they're not very versatile in most aspects of life. And I think American cities are just like that. 
we think they are nice and comfy, but they actually have way more problems than good. And I think Amer the European uh, status of a city is way more practical, efficient, and cost-effective. The amount of money we spend in America is hidden. We think we're spending less because we are not building elaborate buildings like these. We are not, um, you know, building like this. We have, they have pedestrianized streets. They have bicycle lanes. There's a lot of businesses all around, outdoor dining. And you might think, oh wait, this is, they're spending way much money. The taxes are crazy high. Well, there's some truth to that. I don't think that's the full truth. Americans uh, end up spending way more money in their cities due to its inefficiency, how wide and sprawling they are, how car dependent they are, uh, how much need there is to clog up all the highways. The highways probably end up spending way more money than they would ever on efficient public transportation. It costs way more to maintain highways and car infrastructure than it is to spend on buses and trains. It costs way more to provide free parking in most American cities than it would to spend on buses and trains and bicycle lanes and outdoor dining. The costs are way higher in America. We just don't see them. We think we're not paying them. Um, and I think we lost sight of the, effic the efficiency of walking. We think that the freedom of living in an individual unit house with our own individual mode of transportation is freedom. I disagree. I think we, there's more freedom in a big city where you can meet other people, hang out, walk around, get your own business. In America, to start a coffee shop in the middle of the suburbs, it's really hard. Um, you'll have to compete against Starbucks and Walmart and these big, massive, gigantic con conglomerates. Uh, it's, it's very unfeasible to start small businesses in many parts of America. While here in the big city, since the nature of the city is so big and there's so much variety, uh, you can start a small business that competes with a mega conglomerate. That's the benefit of the city. I, I, think, I think it's incorrect to say that Americans are practical and functional. No. We, we, we figure out many great things, especially in terms, also including in cities. But we, we still have yet to learn from the European model. And it could be argued that modern urban planning is more American than it is European. New York was designed in 1811, its grid system. Of course, this grid system dates back all the way to ancient times, uh, to the Romans and then even before to ancient Piraeus near Athens. But at least in the modern world, New York New York and then before then Philadelphia was really the first major city to build a full grid. It was later that Paris, Barcelona, parts of Rome uh, and other major cities, London, started building based on the American model. So this right here, I say is as American as apple pie. We just think it's European, but Americans, at least in the modern world, did it first. Then the Europeans started uh, being inspired by Philly and New York. Ariana says, you're absolutely right. Hello, Lorraine, nice to see you here. Susie, welcome. Susie says, I love an urbanist soliloquy, especially in the southern cities like Atlanta, for example. Atlanta was 
like a Barcelona back in 1910, 1920. Uh, but that was destroyed in order to make way for parking lots because people believe that their freedom was in cars. They believe that freedom was destroying a beautiful building like this or this that used to be in Atlanta. That freedom was destroying this in order to make way for that. Gasoline stations and parking lots. I don't know, do you call that freedom? Let me know in the comments. I mean, America's huge, so we can, we can have every model. But does Atlanta need to be like it is today? A uh, massive lot of parking lots? No, Atlanta should be a big city like Barcelona. It should be as vibrant as Barcelona. Uh, parts of New York, the outer boroughs of New York should be more like Barcelona and other European cities. Uh, if there's, America's huge enough that we can still have those big suburban areas. We don't need to change everything. But with the biggest cities of the US, I think they deserve this, the treatment that Europeans give to their cities and the, the importance to beauty as well and aesthetics and city life. You know, people live in cities for good reason because it's a place where everything's happening. You're always connected to someone and something. And people live in rural areas for the opposite reasons, because they enjoy that space and the ability to um, accessible to nature. But if we have cities in America, I think we should do the best cities we can. And we have that capability. We were the ones, as I mentioned, the ones who really started in the modern world. And we can get in touch back with that sense of building great cities again. Hey, Alias says, I call it free dumb. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, good, good one. America was a pioneer of many world inventions, but then special interest took over. Yeah, yeah, we were the pioneer of many, many, many huge inventions. We really changed a lot of things, including urban design and architecture and construction. Adriana says, I agree, you must have a car in Atlanta. Yeah, I wish I could pull them up right now, but search later on. Uh, photos of Atlanta from 1890s and you'll see the big difference. 1920s Atlanta. It, it, you'll be shocked how Atlanta used to look like compared to how it does today. Hey Susie says, Ariel, please run for city council. I hope to make more change by making videos than ever take any political office. Maybe I should do the Atlanta urbanist once uh, for the next season. All right, now I have no idea where I'm at. Let me. Uh... Right. Hey, Benji says, nice to see you out and about in Europe. Feels like summer already. Safe travels. Oh, yes. All right, let me know if you still see me and hear me. Alien Traveler says, our third spaces have been taken away uh, in the U.S. to make way. It is no coincidence that the U.S. has a huge loneliness epidemic and a crisis in many other aspects, including productive, collaborative office work, innovations in tech, and also a slowing down of uh, birth rates, <laughs> and also in terms of people just making friends and connections. Um, it's no coincidence. It's because people make connections when you can easily go to a cafe or a bar. Oh, 
Bell, the Spanish too started the grid plan. Yes, yeah, they did the uh, grids in all their main colonies. That's correct. Yeah, just like uh, Philadelphia picked up on it later. found here, a Brooklyn cafe, with a man sitting in there that looks like Andy Warhol. Well, that's funny. Susie says, NYC needs you. Thank you, Susie, thank you. I'll run for mayor then. I'll make NYC great again. I mean, I'll make NYC awesome again. I'll make NYC dead ass again. There we go. That'll be my slogan. Dead ass NYC. That'll be my uh, mayoral slogan when I run. Dead ass, comma, NYC. Hey, Hyde says you should offer architectural consultation for U.S. cities. Oh my God! Yeah, that'll be cool. I'll be down. I'm not. I'm not formally trained in architecture, but uh, or urban planning, but I'll be down. That'll be cool. Happy to rant off for payment. K says just go to the top and run for president. Okay, dead ass. Comma, USA. There you go, that's my presidential slogan. <coughs> Excuse me. I still got that Hungarian flu. So now we're going to go to our last stop, which is one of the main big, big streets here in Barcelona. Connects a lot of the major train hubs throughout the city, including this beauty right over here. Look at this. Yeah, Susie says, NYC Mayor Bloomberg was inspired by European cities. Yes, he was indeed, yeah. Wow. I mean, look at this beauty. It's just stunning. This reminds me a lot of Rome. Rome has a few of these kind of semicircle uh, buildings. London as well. Huge hotel here. Oh no, this is a bank. Wow. Susie says, um, Mayor Bloomberg was the one who put seating in Times Square. Yes. Yes. Also in Bryant Park as well, uh, which proved to be a game changer for quality of life. For quality, quality of life in New York. Rumi says, so happy you're in Barcelona. Yeah, Rumi, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much for tuning in and commenting and being awesome. All 
All right, that was an epic walk. My battery's about to die, including my poor gimbal. I miss when the gimbals used to have bigger batteries. I hope they do that again, DJI, which is the company I, use, I buy gimbals from. Um, but right now we're in the main thoroughfare. And if you have any last remaining questions, I'll stick around for five more minutes. And feel free to ask me last questions. This is my final full day in Barcelona. I have to make the best of it. Let me know if you have any recommendations of what else I should do. I haven't been able to do too many short videos here in Barcelona, um, but I have two special videos with my sponsor, who's an airliner. You'll find out who they are on TikTok. I'll be putting the link of that video in the comments uh, in all the platforms. And if you could do me a solid comment on that video, because it'll be awesome to partner up with that airliner again, or other airliners to show you more parts of the world, as well as my first airline sponsorship. So I'm super, super, super hyped and super excited. Camilla says, is there a philosophical chat? There'll be a special live video before the, um, before the premiere of the Athens Urbanist. March 21st, Thursday, March 21st at 7 p.m. is the premiere of the Athens Urbanist. However, right before then, uh, around 5.30 p.m., will be a special live video Q&A about making that Athens series and a general Q&A, like a special red carpet event. Uh, that's before the premiere of my first documentary series ever, six episodes. They'll be posted every Thursdays at 7 p.m. starting March 21st. So stay tuned for March 21st at 5.30 p.m. for a special pre-live video. It was the sponsored first class experience. I was on business class. Uh, the specific airliner does not have first class for the route I took. So I went on business class, which is basically first class uh, if you compare it to other airliners. So yes, I flew, I flew very comfortably. I got access to the lounge. You'll find all, uh, all about that uh, in a, a day or two as I post the first video. Hey, Adriana says, thank you so much. Susie says, dress up for the red carpet premiere. That is a good idea, Susie. Good, good idea. When will they be posted? Uh, April, they'll be posted on YouTube. Urbanist Exploring Cities, Thursdays at 7 p.m. Starting on the 21st. That is next Thursday. A trailer will be coming out later today. The second official, second and last official trailer of the Athens Urbanist. The day after, they'll be posted on Facebook. And Bob has come. He's still waiting for more hamoni berico. He's, he's uh, hungry. They're, they're having some appetizers on the street, but they still want some uh, hamoni berico. Does that mean Urbanist is evolving into an AV geek? What do you mean, Neptune, sir? Will you do a night video tonight, says Camilla. No, this will probably be my last live video for the night. I have to relax. I had to take a bath after all that massive amount of bird excrement on my back. It was great. I really love Barcelona. I do recommend it. I was here for six full days and I enjoyed it. I, it is a great experience. There's a lot of things to do. People here are very friendly. The food is pretty damn good. It's a very multicultural city, so you'll have plenty of things to do and see. And, uh, and the museum and architecture is just amazing. What's the most exciting thing about Barcelona? Definitely Gaudi's architecture. The architecture by Gaudi is stunning. Stunning, stunning architecture. Yves says, this was fun. Neptune Sir says, well, I'd be turning into an aviation enthusiast. Oh, I don't know. Um, no, <laughs> I've become an architectural enthusiast, but not so much an aviation. Uh, though, uh, I do love trains, for example.
and Elmo says, sounds awesome. Susie says, LOL, this has been fun. This was a walk through El Chample. Chample is basically the main hub of the city. Uh, the Gothic Quarter is the old town, the old city. It's a bit south, south from El Chample. And uh, it's only about a 20 minute walk away to the Gothic Quarter. And the bench test right now, the final bench test, ooh, this is a nice bench. I like it. We're in the city. We're right by a big street. Lots of commotion and yet I feel at peace separated from the heavy traffic. This has a nice bump to it. Ooh. I give this a... This is a very good bench. Beautiful architecture. 8.1 out of 10. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Keep being awesome. And always keep on exploring from Barcelona. España. Que tenga un buen día. Adiós, amigos.